to a special Denizens Brewing Excursion episode of... Brutal Battle. So this is our second half of the Silver Spring trip that we did. Uh, and we have a type of beer for this episode to drink on pod that we don't have very often. No. In our regular life and podcast life, we don't really do this beer all that often for a few reasons. One, we're typi- it's, it's typically not something we gravitate to. And the second thing being, it's not super common to find with breweries, but it was so good when we had it at Denizen's that we had to bring it home. We brought home a four pack and it's in 375 milliliter bottles, but let us just say first, um, we had a wonderful time. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, Denizen's was awesome. It was actually, we ended up going when they were having an Oktoberfest thing going on. So they had like this big tent outside with outside seating i think it looks like that has kind of like been there yeah um but it was particularly good for like an oktoberfest type celebration because they also have like outside a a whole cooler system outside with taps on the side and a bar outside yeah which is awesome so if anyone wants to you know be outside they don't necessarily have to go inside to get a beer they can just stay out there which you know Not live music, it did have music on. Yeah, and it kind of seemed to me like the inside was a little bit small seating-wise. Now, apparently they have a downstairs, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't see that. I went in to go to the bathroom at one point, and I just saw, like, a limited amount of seating in the main area. So, yeah, no, I didn't see it downstairs. It was a beautiful fall day. Like, there wasn't any, like, hardly anybody inside. Everybody was outside. Yeah, it was super, super, super And their patio was dog-friendly, but... Most dogs were pretty well behaved. Yeah, we saw a few dogs there. A lot of them were just hanging out. Um, Yeah, it was good. Their staff was all super nice, very helpful. You get your beer really quick. Uh, They had food being served there as well. We got a gigantic pretzel. The pretzel was a little dry. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to say stale, but it wasn't the best pretzel. It was buttery, which was good. Yeah, so the plus was it was very buttery, which is always great with a giant pretzel. The downside is it was pretty dry, but the the other upside is they had really good beer cheese yeah, with it that, was that we were dipping it in. So had it not been as dry as it was, it would have been outstanding, but yeah. it was kind of dry. But It was just a vessel to get the beer, beer cheese, cheese in the <laughs> yeah, I hear you on that one. So um, let's, let's do the beer, and then we'll talk a little bit more about, like, what we had there. Um, so this is... In a series. Like, they do these this series called Hike the Alps. And we had another one of their Hike the Alps beers while we were there. So, we'll talk about that one in a little bit. But this one is their Meritzen. So, obviously, you know, it's an Oktoberfest. We need to try their Meritzen. Um, it is 6% Meritzen. And apparently it says on the side that it's done with German ingredients and a unique Bavarian lager yeast strain. Hmm. So, yeah. So, I'm about to pop this how many beers really do breweries put out there in 375 milliliter bottles yeah. and how many people do a merits in that way it's just kind of interesting i was like oh okay this is how this is packaged there you go rebecca for you and then a little bit for me it's such a pretty like caramel color so not only did we have this while we were there but i also drank one of these the other night so like within the past week so it's pretty fresh in my mind. It's very orange. Yeah. Like orange brown look. Yeah. It's so clear. Yeah. I just love how clear it is. It looks gorgeous. It's a beautiful looking clear beer. Got a little bit of head sticking around on the top. Kind of small bubbles, big bubbles, medium bubbles mixed. Just like bready. Yeah. It's It's got that really nice dark sweet malty note on the yeah. nose. And yeah, it's very bready, which I actually think is one of the descriptors on the side. Yeah, a sweet, bready malt profile, balanced by floral hops. Well, that's really what you get on the nose. Yeah, you picked it up. It's just like, yeah. It, it doesn't smell like a lot. No, no, it just smells like a Meritzen, which yeah. is just like a sweet, malty beer. Uh, but then there's just that extra breadiness. It smells very clean, though. It smells clean and crisp. Um, yeah, going in. And not mm. too sweet, either. Yeah. It is. It's it is. It's Ugh. sweet, but not too sweet. It's like it's so good. It's, it, the color reminds me of caramel. The taste reminds me of caramel. Yeah, it's and you like, get like this grain finish yeah. to it, like 
barley grain finish that's like, it's just really nice. It's kind of like a, this cool way to transition to the bitterness on the end of it, which is kind of low. It's not like super bitter. It's easy drinking. Mm-hmm. If you like nice, sweet, malty beers that aren't too sweet, this is a really good one. I feel like I almost get like a slight, slight cherry hint in there. Okay. And you can perceive the hops too. Yeah, you can actually. There is a slight hoppiness hanging out on there, which I think is good at kind of balancing out sweetness mm-hmm. in a beer like this. Yeah. Because Meritsen sometimes when I have them can be really too sweet. This one's balance is awesome. This is a really good beer. This is one of the best Meritsen I can remember having in yeah. my life. Um, very good. So very, very good. Uh, thanks, Denison. All right. So. What did we drink there? What did we We did two flights. We did. Oh, and this is an all-woman-owned brewery, by the way. I don't know if it's all-woman-owned. Is it all? I thought so. I thought someone had said that. Yeah, but Maybe I'm wrong. Or it's... We'll just say it's it's woman-owned. Yeah. Partially. At 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 least least one woman owns it. Yeah. So... Now, I'm going to say prior to going there and experiencing the beers that we did, we'd only had one Dennis's beer. And it was their uh, Georgia Avenue, which was like a fruited sour with peach. And we liked that. Mm -hmm. We actually liked that a lot when we had it. I remember it, you know, having a lot of peach to it with like a salinity, like a bit of a salinity. It was really nice. So what did we have while we were there? Uh, We had their South Side, which was a rye IPA. um, And that one was was very tasty. tasty. Yeah, we really enjoyed that one. We had their Backyard Boogie, which... May have been the one we liked the least. Yeah. That was a farmhouse ale um, that was barrel aged and done with Britannomyces. So it was sour. It just tasted like very sour. It kind of had like an acetone note to it. Wasn't really big on that. It was kind of one note flavor. Yeah. We weren't big on that one. But then we had their critter, which... I so good. I rated it like my first few sips, I rated it lower on untapped than how I felt about it in the end because that's definitely one of those beers where as it warms up, it really opens up and it was a hazy pale ale. And you know how we are with hazy beers. Like we're for the most part not into it, but the flavor in that was, was so really good. good. I think if they had that to go we would have done, done that one. Oh, yeah, 100%. And it's 5.1%, so it's, like, yeah. very sessionable but very flavorful. Um, so they say it's their juicy pale ale, and it's done with Strata and Azaka hops, which, you know, those are good ones. We love that one. Then we had their Hike the Alps Pilsner, which we enjoyed, not nearly as much as the Meritzen, though. And then we had their Animal which was an Imperial Hazy IPA. And that, this one is done with, it doesn't say which hops on Untapped, but it just says Double Dry Hopped IPA. So That was good. And that was 6%, so it wasn't that much more. And then we had their Big Red Norm, which we quite liked. That was their American Red Ale. So it's, you know, like hoppy, but also very sweet at the same time. We really enjoyed that one. Uh, then we had their Cool Breeze, which was an oatmeal stout. 4.5% oatmeal yeah. stout, stout, by the way. How often are you seeing stouts that are that low in ABV? It's wonderful. You know, we're coming across more and more breweries doing low ABVs, though. Well, I just hope that trend continues. Yeah. I just want that to keep going. Uh, it's like we drink low ABVs and then we drink beers from the brewery. <laughs> Yeah, they're like 20% 20%. alcohol, and it's like... It's either 5 or 20. Well, you need the low ones to balance that out, basically. Like, we literally don't drink brewery beers super often. A lot of times when we do, it's shared with people because of the high ABV. Yeah, but that Cool Breeze was awesome. Like, we loved that oatmeal stout. It was a wonderful oatmeal stout. Love, love, love that one. I think that one was also not available to go. We probably would have done that one, too. And then the last one we had was this Hike the Alps Meritson. Yeah. And it was awesome. And we had a great time. And just the vibe was good. Yeah. I was so, I, I love their like outside seating space. There's a lot of seating out there. And they're all picnic tables. Yeah. Well, pic- except a couple of high tops, which yeah, is where we were. We were at a high top. And then it's like AstroTurf. Yeah. Down there, which, you know, who wants to mow grass? So that's smart. And then 
it really seemed like they had a great system there for, like, how everyone was working together and, like, how people were, you know, coordinating with, like, getting the beers and, and getting the them tables and getting the food. And yeah, it was... And I, I also have to say, the guy we saw... I, we didn't catch his name, but the guy we saw delivering all the food items, always a huge smile on his yeah, face. Yeah, he was hustling. Yeah, he was working hard, and he looked like he was very happy and just a jovial guy, like, talking people up when he was giving them the food. And it's just, those are the types of people you like to have. Because it makes you feel even more welcome when you're there. Mm -hmm. And, like, when you see someone who looks like they're enjoying their job, it also just makes you feel better about that place. Well, even, like, when you, you walk up and there's, a, like, a hostess stand, and I don't know her name either, but she was so nice and helpful That's and friendly. Because I yeah. guess you can make reservations. She said, oh, yeah. a reservation? We said no. And yeah. she's like, okay, I'll sit you over here. And she explained, like, how you order. and Yeah, everyone was, was good. It was it was a great experience. And it, the other thing is it's, it's not like a system where, you know, one person – you know, they handle one table. It's kind of like everyone was like on the lookout for what each table needed, basically. So it, it worked really, really well. Um, very impressed. We yeah. we love denizens, and we're definitely going to go back at some point because we want to try more beer. And we would have tried more beer had we not already had a decent amount of beer prior to getting there. Yeah, it was a it was a fun day. It, that was a, like the best way to cap off our day was at Denison's. We loved it. So, yeah, really fun time. People, if you can make it to Silver Spring, Maryland, go to Denison's for sure. Um, yeah, and that's anything else to wrap up for you? I don't think so. Okay, yeah, think well then, let's give out our things. I always, like, change the order of this, too, by the way. It's like, it's just like however it pops into my head. So it's like, you want to email us? Email us at brutalbattlepodcast at gmail.com. Then, Rebecca, talk about the Instagram <laughs> Brutal Battle Podcast. And then Untapped. Ruby Reb 62. And I'm Carlton Malibu, spelled as it sounds, all one word. Uh, also, rate us and review us, please, on whatever podcatcher you use. Or, you, well, you know, iTunes helps the best. I say it all the time. Word of mouth, though. Word of mouth is the best way to get our name out there and tell other people and grow the audience. So we appreciate that. And if you want back episodes, you can go to BrutalBattle.com, where you'll also see photos of each of the beers that are tried on all the episodes, and you'll also be able to find those back episodes on archive.org, just searching Brutal Battle if you want to do it that way. Either way, whatever. But thanks, everyone, for listening, and for those out there who have been listening to this podcast for a long time, you are the best. We love you so much. And until next time, keep it brutal. Keep it brutal.